Blog Talk Radio. My name's Davida Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits on the Blog Talk Radio Network. When is it time to turn your side hustle into a full-time business? Now, here's the thing, that in today's marketplace, you want to create an income for yourself that's recession-proof. And what I do is I help business owners turn that side hustle into a full-time business. So making the decision to turn a side hustle into a full-time job is massive for the business, yes, but also personally. So how do you know when it's time? I made the decision in 2020, leaving a startup I spent four years building to pursue my side hustle, career support tool, Lloyd, full-time. I didn't take the decision lightly. One in three Americans have a side hustle, and the number could significantly increase by the end of 2021. Take a look at Zapier's snapshot of America's side hustles. Now, what is a side hustle? Well, a side hustle can be cleaning people's homes. It can be dog walking. It can be gardening. Anything that you do for enjoyment that you can literally turn into an income. The thing is, you want to generate leads. So how are you going to generate those leads? Well, what you need is a sales funnel where what you're doing is gathering names, putting them into an autoresponder, and keeping in touch with those contacts and developing that relationship because you never know when they may need your services or they may know someone who needs your services because what you want to be able to do is create joint ventures. And when you create joint ventures, then your opportunities for constant business become astronomical. In fact, I can tell you a little story that recently I had to, all right, what I did was I purchased a new desk for myself and I wanted an L-shaped desk so that my computer with my microphone was in front of me and my printer was over on the side of me because what happened was I had just a little small table that had leaves in it that I opened up, but everything was all on there. I had no place to put anything away. This way I have drawers to keep things instead of having to store things in the other room where I have to go get them every time I need them. I have them right at my access. Well, the thing was, I could have gone to Office Depot and had it put together for me from a company, and they told me, that who the name of the company, when I called the company to set it up, they said they would call me back to take my credit card. And they were only going to charge me $190 to put the whole thing together. And they knew up front it would take at least four hours to put it together. Well, when they did call me, I happened to have been out I was having trouble hearing them on the phone, and I had no way to get back so that I could give them the credit card and set it up. And I happened to go looking for Angie's list, but instead somehow found a lead on Yelp and called them, and he had told me $149. Well, that was a little bit cheaper when I couldn't get the other company. I figured, why not? Well, I set up the appointment. His, his guy came out. When he got here, the guy 
took a picture of, of what it was that he was to set up, sent it back to the company, and the guy said, con he talks to me and tells me that he thought it was just a little TV table that we were put, he was putting together. And he was going to have to take them off another job to complete my job and, and get it done. So he was going to have to charge me an extra $100. Well, the guy was already here, so I said, okay, fine. Well, two hours after he's, and he's halfway through the job, he leaves because his boss calls him and tells him he has an emergency plumbing job that has to be done. And he, then he tells me, oh, I'll be back later. So meanwhile, what happens was about 6.30, I finally call to find out what's going on. Oh, he's still on the job. He's, it was, he had to go all, it was an hour and a half away from where I'm at. He was going to come back by, by 7.30, 8 o'clock. Well, that time comes, he's still not here. So I call him, oh, the truck broke down. I can come back tomorrow morning around 8 o'clock. Well, as you see, this show is being done between 8 and 8.30. So I come, come back at 8.30. Well, 8.30 times, 9 o'clock time. No one should try getting them on the phone, got no answer. Call the, the home company. No one an, then, then all of a sudden someone answers and they hang up on me. Couldn't get a hold of anyone until 11.30. So, then, and then it's like, oh, he's going to get the truck. Well, I never hear anything. So then I got pissed. So I finally got on Angie's list, got a hold, uh, put in information. And because it was a first time, it would have been $190 for two hours. But because I got 15% off, it was $164. Well, the guy came back out that, that evening uh, around 3, 4 o'clock to get it, to finish it. Then around 7.30, they called me. Oh, he's ready to come. And then they called me back two weeks later. They wanted to be paid for the time. Well, first of all, I had no contract with them right now. It was all a verbal agreement. They didn't complete the job. They didn't get paid. So you have to be aware that you have companies out there that will take advantage of you. And you need, that's why, and a lot of, even people that do side houses will go through a company like Angie's List, because it is a reputable company, it makes them reputable. So just be aware of what's going on out there and have offer good customer service, because if you don't offer good customer service, then no matter how or what kind of side hustle you have, you are not going to be successful. So the idea is we want you to learn how to build a business the right way and offer the best customer service because the idea is to get repeat business, to get referrals. What to consider when making the jump from a side hustle to a full-time business, especially if you like your full-time job, deciding to jump ship to pursue your side hustle it can be anxiety-inducing experience. To give yourself some structure in making the decision, I narrowed it down to five broad inputs that I needed to consider. The first one being sustainable business. I asked myself, is this side hustle capable of becoming a sustainable business? Have I built? more than back to the envelope model to show how the business could thrive and grow. Having an idea is much different than having proof of the concept. You need to have been working with your side hustle long enough to feel confident that your business model makes sense. If you're leaving a salary and benefits behind, can't be a, a trust fall. So here's the thing. Remember this, that you want a sustainable business. 
like the story I just told you, the second one that came out and finished the job, he was working in medical sales. And what happened was when the pandemic hit, his job disintegrated. And he liked to build things. So he started building and fixing up around the house. Then neighbors started asking him to do jobs for them. So what he was able to do was create it and put it into a full-time business that he starts out at 8 o'clock in the morning, goes to one job, goes and doesn't finish up to 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Well, he's created a really good second income for himself. And if he develops a following, then he's going to have a sustainable business because people always, when you, in today's marketplace, you're not just going to go in to a place like Office Depot and purchase a ready-made desk. What they're going to do is you're going to order from them and they're going to send you the parts that you have to put together. And either you know how to do it or you don't know how to do it. And the thing was, when the second guy came out, he, and even before that, I noticed that the first guy, when he had started putting the, the, the desk together, he had actually put a board in wrong. It put it in backwards. And then when, the, when, my second, when my second one came out to complete the job, he not only, he realized the guy also put some screws in wrong. So here's the thing, know your business and do it correctly and be reputable and stand behind your work or you will not be able to create that income with that side hustle. External validation. I felt confident that my side hustle was sustainable, but what about not me? I made sure to find at least 10 people with knowledge of the sector and ask for feedback. Did they think it was sustainable? Were there any red flags I was missing? Was anyone super skeptical? If you don't run into any skeptics, keep searching. You want to find folks that are skeptical of your idea, gets pushed and evolves. You don't want confirmation keeping you on the wrong track. Personal finance. This is a big one. Even if your side hustle is the next Facebook. Spoiler alert, it's almost definitely not. You need, and you still need, to be able to survive while you're building it. There are lots of questions to ask here. Are you comfortable without a salary for at least six months, maybe more? How about health insurance? When you're not on an employee's plan, it's seriously expensive. And how about the opportunity employers, the, the opportunity that costs like growing a 401k. Be sure to think beyond salary to understand how leaving your full-time job will affect your finances. That's a big one because remember this, unless you have established a, a plan or an exit from one job to another or you've worked long enough to build up some savings that you can live on, then it's very difficult, and I can also tell you this much, that growing up with a disability, I didn't have the same opportunities as everyone else in the workplace. So I had to figure out what it was that I wanted to do. And I knew that my education and background was in mental health and psychology and rehabilitation counseling. And rehabilitation counseling happens to be employment counseling for people with disabilities. And my business over the years has evolved from what it started out to be to what it is today. And without getting into a whole lot of detail, what's happened is that because I did not have the same mobility as everyone else and didn't really have 
with funds available or the support systems in my family, I was basically out there on my own trying to figure out what I could do. And here's the thing. I was educated before IDEA, which is Individual Disability Education Act, which guaranteed people with disabilities the right to an education. Therefore, I was the only person in the school, much less the classroom, with a disability. So my peers had no experience of what it was like to sit next to someone with a disability or how to react to them as individuals and people. And then I entered the workforce 12 years before ADA became law. And when I couldn't find gainful employment, that's when I had to decide what it is that I wanted to do. And today I'm a career and personal development strategy coach that works with business owners to learn how to recession proof their business. And that means I do it through coaching and through e-learning courses. And here's the kicker that a few years ago, even before the pandemic actually hit, I was creating some videos and e-learning courses and putting them on Skillshare and Udemy. And from there, right when the pandemic hit, I had a company that called me that wanted me to put my e-learning courses on their platform. And from that one, it has evolved to where I'm on at least eight or nine different platforms selling my courses. So the just the just the fact of realizing we're now getting getting out of the pandemic and things will slowly go back to normal, but things will never be how they are before before. And if you want a sustainable income, you need to make sure that you have some type of presence online because if you don't, you're leaving money on the table. Because more and more people, especially the millennials and generation Z, understand and utilize purchasing online far more than anyone else. Interest level. In theory, if you have a side hustle, it's because it's something you love. But enjoying something right now is very different than being dedicated to it for the next however many years. You can't build a business in a day. So this is a long-haul adventure. Be sure that it's not something that you'll get sick of in a few months after the novelty has worn off. That's a big one to be aware of. If you are looking for, for doing something that will put you exactly where you expect to be in the next few years, then you need to make sure that you are doing something that you know you will want to be doing in 20 years from now or even 30 years from now. Life. Yeah, life. As it turns out, money and interest level aren't the only two things dictating your enjoyment of an ability to succeed at. Starting a business, you need to ask yourself, is this the right time in your personal life to dive into an all-consuming new venture? If you have kids, will you be able to balance that with the new business? If you have a partner, are they supportive of the plan? Do you have other personal commitments that might clash with the new venture? You probably noticed the only two of the five inputs have to do with the side hustle itself. As I look back on the decision I made about six months ago, and that turned my side hustle into a full-time role that tracks the changes in your professional life. It's nothing compared to how a new business affects your personal life. We're talking about work hours, potentially stimulating relationships, revenue issues, potentially 
straining your personal finances. The list goes on. Being committed and understanding the risk is crucial. Another thing to consider, when you're doing your side hustle, you're working from home. So you're basically creating a home-based business. And you have to have a place in your home where you're going to be doing that business. And how you do it is this. Your office, and you keep certain hours, and you let your family members know that when that door is closed, they are not to disturb you. Because if they do, then what's going to happen is it's going to affect how well you take and do the right times of business for yourself. So always remember this, that you have to be the one to decide how to do and plan for your business. So how do you qualify decisions to do your business? That's a very good question to ask yourself and also important to recognize. Now, here's the thing. It's one thing to consider all these questions, but how do you then turn that into a decision? I decided to break it down into a scoring system. An obvious caveat, this isn't the be-all, end-all rubric. Every person will weigh each input differently, and you shouldn't make a life-altering decision based on one stranger's purpose or purple score sheet, but hopefully this can help you get started. So here's how it works. For each of the five categories, you apply a score of one to five. And, I gen- and one generally means that you're very or you're wary about readiness to the category. And five means you're ex- de- extremely confident. So look at it this way. We've talked about the sustainable business, validated with others, personal finance, interest in life. So you're not all in, you're somewhat in, or yes, you're definitely in. Take each of those and put in a score, and that will help you decide whether or not to pursue your goals and look at the things that will help you to to decide whether or not to take that side hustle and put it into a full-time business. While there isn't an exact cutoff score in either direction, the point of this exercise is to acknowledge that there should be a high bar when leaving a full-time job for another venture. What's considered high, I generally put it at a 22 or higher out of 25. Again, that's directional measure. This isn't science. 22 is a, or higher means that you didn't have a one in any category. And if you had two in any category, the rest were fives. So pretty high across the board. But of course, there's a nuance. If you have a two on personal finance, or a five on everything else, you need to think twice. You can't afford rent and food for six months. You almost certainly won't be able to build a business. Creating a timeline to hold yourself accountable. And that's where everything is very important. And you truly need to consider this. Let's say that you scored 25 on the chart and above, but carefully considered the decision and are ready to take the plunge to leave your current job and dive full-time into your side hustle. Hold on to a second and don't do yourself a favor. Create a timeline 
for yourself with benchmarks that you want to hit. You aren't going to have a boss or even co-workers to keep you on task. So before you start, and by that I mean before you quit your full-time job, create these benchmarks. What needs to happen at the end of each month? For the first three months, in order for you to keep going, I encourage you to make these quantifiable goals so that you can measure your progress objectively. It could be a number of signups, revenue, product usage, or any other metric that matters to your business. If you're starting the business alone, it can be helpful to invite a partner or a friend to part of your monthly review just to offer an extra layer of accountability. You want to avoid close enough traps. For even more confidence, go back to your chart and make sure that your scores are either steady or increasing month by month. The business isn't the only thing that needs to be on track. Be sure that you're still feeling good about your financial situation, your interest level, and your personal life. And always remember that it's up to you to decide where and how you are going to change your life. So some other things to consider. And this kind of life-changing decision shouldn't be boiled down to one chart, of course. There are plenty of other things to consider. The list is long, and here are a few considerations that you should keep top of your mind as you think about taking the plunge, pivoting the business, going back to a regular job. That's the biggie. So, as many entrepreneurs have learned, the initial concept that you start with, often not what your business turns into. Flickr started as a video game. Shopify started as a snowball equipment store. The list goes on, and especially during the pandemic, businesses have had to pivot out of pure and urgent necessity. Take Museum Hat, which pivoted from an in-person tour business to a remote team building company in a matter of weeks. The short of it, you need to be flexible. If your side hustle is more about passion of what you're selling or offering and less about the passion for starting a business, you need to think of hard about that because it's possible that your baby will grow up to be different than you imagined. Well, let me also tell you this, that when I started my business, it started out in one way. But where it is today, 35 years later, is very different than where it was. It's the same industry, but the industry itself has changed. And as we just told you how Shopify got started, what they did, how they had to adapt, how many companies had to change from being in person to being done remotely. So recognize those things. And remember this, you can go to my website, and that's the number one, personalcareercoach.com, and you can sign up for coaching, or you can get some e-learning courses that can help you to decide what you want to do and how you want to build your own business. Thank you.